Welcome back to another video, guys. I hope you have been enjoying these cooking videos so far because I've got another one for you today. If you've been on my channel uh, following for the past couple weeks at least, you would know that I just recently went lobstering down in Key West for mini season in July. And I feel like on my channel now, it's almost tradition to do a whole video dedicated to a lobster recipe because I just love them so much. And you guys usually enjoy them too, just as much as I enjoy making them. So today I've got a whole completely different recipe. I've never made this before. I've never put lobster meat on skewers. So I'm really excited to try it because I love eating stuff off of a skewer. Who doesn't love to do that? Chicken, steak, deer meat, all kinds of stuff. We're gonna be kind of like breading, battering the lobster meat. I've got some coconut flour. We're gonna do some shredded coconut. And I'm going to uh, blend some macadamia nuts because we're gonna do a macadamia coconut crusted lobster. So I'm about to put this all together. I need to blend my macadamia nuts. When I'm done doing that, I will move on to the tails, our favorite part. <laughs> I'll meet you right back here when I'm done blending this. So I just blended my macadamia nuts. I've got like a nice, it almost looks like the coconut flour. Key with blending nuts, if you wanna use them for a crusted fish, try not to blend them too much or too long or else you're gonna start getting a nut butter and you don't wanna do that. I've chosen macadamia nuts today, but I'm pretty sure, I mean, any nut of your choice. You could use almonds, pistachios, cashews. I just really love the flavor of macadamia with coconut. I think it is just, I can already smell it, it smells so good. I'm gonna pour my blended macadamia nuts in this bowl. If you have been watching my catch and cook videos over the years, you know that I don't really love to be uh, super particular with measurements. I like to kind of eyeball things and just kind of do things according to how I'm making it here because everyone's different. You might be making lobster tails for 10 people or you might be making lobster tails for four. It's gonna vary based off of how much you're doing. Say you want more coconut or more macadamia or more flour, just kind of put in however much that you prefer more of. That's the beauty of this kind of a thing. That I'm, most of the cooking that I like to do is just kind of do what you want more of. I love coconut, I love macadamia nuts, and it's all fine enough that you can make, you can do equal parts of each. All right, a lot of that. I love, love coconut. I'm gonna get this all mixed up evenly. When you feel that that's evenly mixed up right there, set it aside, and now we're gonna work on the tails. You have seen me do this a bunch of times on my channel, if you've been watching me over the years. I love to uh, cut, crack my lobster tails this way. It is to me the, just I don't know, my favorite way to bake them, grill them, serve them. I think it looks beautiful if you leave them in the, in the shell. Today we're gonna be taking the meat out of the shell to get the meat out of the shell. So, you can get a knife, and I use this knife almost just specifically for cutting my lobster tails. I really don't use this knife very often. It's not super sharp, it's not really thin, it's more of a thicker blade, and it's just kind of a, it's not like my most fanciest knife, let's just say that. I have used fancy ceramic knives on the lobster tails and chipped them. You don't wanna do that, so try to grab something that's strong and hearty, that's gonna, you know, that you can really crack through a hard shell with. Other people like to use scissors, you just cut right along the back of the shell. I do have a video of me doing that as well in case you'd like to watch me do that. But this is how I usually like to cut into my lobster tails. So you take the knife, firm grip, and get a good initial slice into the shell. You can hear how tough it is, it's a tough shell. And then just work your way down the middle of the shell. Keep your hands out of the way and then cut down, but you don't wanna cut all the way through. And then look at that, it makes a perfect little serving dish like that. There, I think that looks so beautiful on a plate. The meat comes out very easily.
just like that. So you've got a fabulous lobster tail right there. So let me do the other one. And then you can throw this away, this is no good. And beautiful. Look at that. So you can start peeling the meat out from the front. It comes right out. And there you go. Two nice pieces of lobster tails. I'm gonna hold this up for you. If you can see, there's two sides kind of. It's almost butterflied itself. So we're gonna cut through each half. And you're gonna put one half on a skewer. So try to cut down the middle. Try to make them even. So now I have four pieces right here. And a skewer is gonna go in each one. So now you're ready to start breading your uh, lobster tails. So get your bowl back out with your batter that you made with your flour and just roll the meat around and coat it evenly in the batter. You'll notice the lobster meat is very juicy. It holds the batter really nicely. You don't really need to do the egg Although you can if you want. And then you know what? All right, so I'm gonna grab a dry plate just to place these on because I don't wanna put them back on the juicy cutting board. So I don't know if you can tell by the glare and then, you know, fluff it back up so you can get a nice dry layer of flour. We just did some flouring, breading type of uh, recipe on my last video actually. I did some really good cobia, also battered in coconut flour, but with a delicious sour cream sauce. That was really good. If you wanna check out that video after this one or try that recipe, if you've got some cobia or some good fish, that was delicious. All right, last piece here. Oh, this smells so good. Just the just the flour and the macadamia nuts and the coconut. I love it. And then you can get your pan turned on. So we're doing this on the stove in a pan. Turn it on like a medium high, medium, yeah, medium high heat and use a cooking oil or butter of your choice. I'm gonna use some avocado oil today. Start getting your pan heated up and we're gonna put the skewers in the lobster tails. So since I've never done this before, I'm gonna start at like the fatter end and just kind of weave it through. Just like that. I hope you guys uh, enjoy the lobstering videos from this year. We didn't have the best weather and circumstances. Uh, Lewis and I, went lobstering off the jet ski on day two and we didn't do as well as we thought as we would but um it was a really still a really amazing trip as always i love mini season uh, the first day was very successful we we limited out on the first day oh this is looking so good so if you haven't seen those videos yet definitely go check them out you got to see the the catching and the cleaning part because this is just the cook video okay so this is how i'm looking I hope yours looks good. I have some shorter skewers today. I usually have those long ones, but I don't know where I found these little short ones. But I think it's gonna be nice to put in the pan like that, the short ones, because the long ones might get too long. The longer ones are good for the grill. The shorter ones are good for the pan. My pan is hot enough. It's ready for the tails. Let's see how nicely those short skewers fit in the pan. And now I'm just gonna leave them there. I'm not gonna touch them for at least three to five minutes, depending on how big your tails are.
So while the tails are on the uh, pan, we're gonna make a little sauce to go with them. I have some coconut milk, some sweet chili sauce, and some mayo. We're gonna do kind of like a little aioli sauce. I'm gonna do maybe a tablespoon or two of the coconut milk. I still need to open both of these things. Keep an eye on your tails because you really do not wanna overcook them. I'm gonna flip mine. Since the lobster tail meat has a funny shape to it, you might need to flip it on like a third side. You'll kind of know more what I'm talking about when you get to that, but it's not flat like a piece of steak or chicken or whatever. It's kind of got, you know, it's kind of round. Might have to turn mine again on another side to make it even. So let's get back to this sauce. I have about a tablespoon or two of coconut milk. I'm gonna do just a little bit of this sweet chili sauce. And just give it a little shake. <laughs> All right, just a little bit. Let's do some mayo. It's really handy when you've got all the things that you need ready in your kitchen. And I've never made this sauce before. I love aiolis. Any kind of aioli, I love it. And aioli is a mayo-based sauce. So you can make a citrus lime aioli, which is one of my favorites. I'm sorry, cilantro lime aioli. I've made quite a few aiolis on this channel. Let me add maybe a little bit more of this sweet chili uh, sauce. And that is looking really pretty. Give it a little taste. Hmm. Hmm. Ooh, maybe a little more sweet chili sauce. <laughs> okay. I am not the most graceful person. Give it another little stir. Flip my lobster tails again. These are also looking very pretty. And let me get out my, I don't know if you guys noticed, but I got this brand new Kim Rohde plate. There's the back. I have been wanting a piece by Kim Rohde for years, and I finally found one that I love. I think it's gorgeous. I love Kim Rohde's artwork. If you haven't heard of her, check her out. She does all kinds of fish, lobsters, turtles. I think she lives in the Bahamas, and she just makes beautiful, beautiful dinnerware, serverware, stuff like that. And my sauce is ready to go. That is gonna be drizzled across the top. Let me get my lime cut here. The lobster tails are still going. One more flip. Flip him again. Oh, they look so good. All right, so the tails are done. They're ready to come off. I'm gonna just place them very nicely on the plate. So now that you have them on the plate or wherever you are uh, serving them, I'm gonna take a little bit of this sauce and just do like a drizzle. Or you could use it as a dipping sauce, but I'm gonna drizzle it. All right, and I'm gonna leave that on the side just in case I want more. I'd love to have a few slices of lime. Oh my gosh, the lime smells so good. And then I have this micro rainbow mix microgreens that I get from Whole Foods. I'm obsessed with these microgreens. They are so delicious. And we can do a little bit across the side. And look how beautiful this looks. That is really, really going to impress your guests, not only with just the visual presentation, but with the taste and the goodness of the lobster tails. All right guys, this is the moment that we've all been waiting for. I'm about to try this delicious macadamia coconut crusted lobster on a stick.
Mmm. 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 So it's a little messy, but oh my goodness, it's amazing. I absolutely love the flavors of the macadamia and the coconut with the lobster meat. Lobster meat, I feel like, is a little bit more on the sweeter side naturally. So is macadamia and coconut. So those flavors all together are just magical. Okay, so I'm gonna actually slide it off the skewer. It's a little messy. <laughs> and I'm gonna dip it in some more of the sauce because the sauce is really good too. Mmm. Mmm. You guys, this was absolutely incredible. I can't believe I haven't made this in the past. I'm like blown away at how delicious this is. And not only is it really delicious and sweet and just all kinds of good things, it's also healthy. I, um, if you know me on my channel, you know I don't like to really eat very super unhealthy foods. This is all good, clean ingredients, healthy, it's nourishing and I caught it myself. How cool is this? I really, really hope you get to try it. I'm sure that this would also be really good on any kind of fish. That would be delicious as well. Shrimp um, would also be good, but oh my goodness, if you get a chance to try it on some spiny lobster, do it. I cannot wait to finish this dish, but I'm gonna leave you guys right here. Thank you all so much for watching. Again, if you missed those lobstering videos from this year, definitely go check them out. They're really good and a great way for you to see the whole process from sea to table. Again, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Hit the like button, leave a nice comment, all that good stuff. And I'll see you all in my next video. Oh my God. Mm.